Hey guys, what's going on? Well, you can see I've just been mucking about and uh, figuring out how to do this little simple uh, multiplexing program to make the display say something or whatever. I, um, I'll show you the code in just a second, but basically if I press this switch, it just changes. Um, it's really a simple multiplexing. It's probably as basic as you can get. Uh, but you got to start somewhere, right? So what I've done is I've taken the outputs from RD0 through RD6 and brought them to the, uh, the cathodes of the seven segment display. This happens to be a common anode display. And um, for each of the anodes, I've, I've run those to some just some PMP 2N3904 BJT transistors and uh, using those to switch switch on and I'm grabbing 12 volts from over here which you don't really need like I'll show you if I cut the 12 volts out just turn the switch off there it's still there it's just uh, a little dimmer I don't know if you can, can tell the difference definitely so um, so I'm using the 12 volts just to make it a little brighter and uh, the BJT's I've just got the um, emitter to 12 volts uh, the base is going to some output pins on the 18F 45K20 I had to use I used RA0 RA1 RA3 and RB2 because for some reason I couldn't get RA2 to to, uh, to output somehow it's it's short at the ground or something um, either that or I gotta change something in my configuration I've uh, I disabled the ABC and the comparators but it's still it's still showing as uh, as low all the time so if anybody has any ideas about that please let me know so anyway those go to the base and the collector then goes back over to the display to supply the 12 volts through the uh, common anode of each each uh, bit or digit and uh, I didn't get to write what I want because when I um, I grabbed this display from a, an old microwave oven display board and uh, what I did was it had some big plastic thing around it with some legs and I just took a Dremel and, and cut that off it's not the prettiest thing but it works and uh, when I mapped it out which I'll post a video on how to map out a seven segment display um, I found out that this segment over here, the top top right segment of the least significant bit, is uh, burned out. So <clears throat> I'm not able to use that. And um, yeah, but that's what you get for getting old stuff. Anyway, like I was saying, this segment here, which I guess you could call segment B this uh, vertical one here, the top vertical is, uh, is burnt out so anyway so that's what I got and uh, here's the code to show you how to do this and of course you can make it say whatever you want and it might be a little different depending on your um, display and of course what ports you use uh, what pick you use or whatever but thanks for watching And just so you can get an idea, this is the hot mess it was before I decided to solder all the wires to the board and make it look a little neater. Freaking alligator clips everywhere. But you know, before you do something, you want to test it. So that's what it was. Peace. Alright, so here's the code. 
and uh, we'll go over it real quick because it's pretty simple. You know, um, just figuring out how to multiplex to control a 4-bit 7-second display. All the list and include and the configuration. And then uh, I just set up two variables for the uh, delay loop. <clears throat> so I'm using two registers for the delay. And then I've set the oscillator to uh, 16 megahertz in this case. And it's on the internal oscillator block. I've disabled the comparator 1, comparator 2, and the ADC. Cleared port A and made it all output. Cleared port B, um, bit 2, and set that to an output because for some reason I can't seem to get RA2 to work. I don't know if it's a, that demo board has something shorted to ground. I'll have to check it out. If it's something in my configuration and somebody knows, please point it out. You know, I, I thought that, you know, turning the comparators and the ADC off would fix that, but it didn't. So maybe I need to do something up here in the configuration. But anyway, and then I've cleared port D and set all of its pins to output. So now the main program is pretty much just like, you know, blinking an LED on and off or making some LEDs kind of like blink in sequence or whatever. Um, it's pretty easy really. Uh, I've moved the value to make uh, an L into the working register and then I clear port A, uh, which is what I'm using to control. That's that's a port that's connected to the uh, common anodes of the seven segment display. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear before I uh, moved anything into the port, into port D. That way it doesn't display something arbitrarily. So clear port A, go ahead and move that L value into port D. So if you looked at the LEDs at that moment, you would see that value, 4, 6, hex. <clears throat> and then once I set port A, RA3 high, then it displays on the digit 0, which is the least significant in my case. And then I call the delay just so that it's up there long enough so that um, it actually displays it. If we try to just do all of this without a delay at all, then uh, it'll just be arbitrary numbers um, or values, as I should say. It might not even be a number or a letter. But it's also important where you put the delay because if you don't have the delay in the right spot, it doesn't give it enough time to register. So. Uh, I guess I just got lucky, but I, I played around with it a little bit until I finally got it. So after the delay, then I can clear port A, R, A3 and remove the character from the display and then move on to the next character. And I just repeat that for all four. Now you'll see the middle section here is a little bit longer and that's just because I'm using the same character for the two middle digits so that was easy I didn't have to uh, clear it and move something else and all of that since it's the same character and then the last character here which is the C and uh, after that all I've done is I did a, a bit test to see if the switch had been pressed or not and uh, if it hasn't been pressed then we just loop and go to the main program back up here and just do it all over again and continue to do that until it's been pressed and once it's been pressed we'll go to the poof label which the poof label is the same exact program I just changed the values for uh, the first and, and last character and uh, Again, at the end, it's the same. I do a bit test to see if it's been released this time. And if, it's, if it has been released, then um, we'll go back to main. So um, that's pretty much it. If it hasn't been released, 
then it'll go back to poof and it'll keep coming repeating here this way and this way until it's been released and then it'll it'll skip that go to command and go to the main and then here's the delay loop and I just you know loaded the registers with 255 so it's 256 times that it has to count down to get to zero and um, I just you know used two registers to make the, the delay uh, long enough so that everything would uh, show up on the displays now one thing you need to keep in mind when doing these delays is that you can't just calculate you know the the period that an instruction cycle is and multiply it by how many times you have to decrement or whatever because well first off you've got your call routine you know your call command that takes two instruction cycles uh, then you've got your your loading of the register so it's an instruction cycle for each of those and then you've got your decrement port command which is either one or two instruction cycles and you've got your go to command which is two instruction cycles so you're not just uh, going through one instruction cycle you're going through multiple instruction cycles and with the way I have this set up it the delay is about 862 hertz between um, for the whole program basically you know so it takes about 862 cycles per second to uh, it, it gets back here so 862 times in one second so um, that's it if you have any questions you know please let me know if you have comments like it rate it subscribe share it hate it thanks